Come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in, I pray. Come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Sing with me one more time. Come in to my heart. Come in to my heart. Come in to my heart. Lord Jesus, come in today. Come in, I pray, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. It is our endeavor and it is our prayer that the Lord would come into our heart. Let me just greet everyone in the name of the Lord. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. God has been good to us. He has kept us. He has preserved us. Amen. He has protected us. This is why we serve this God. We know that we're not here by accident. It is the blessing of the Lord. And we will always give thanks unto him for all that he has done. We want to specially give God thanks. Amen for Elder Brown, who is out of the hospital. We thank God that he has continued to touch his people. Amen. We continue to press him. And also we thank God for Elder Gordon, who is also out of the hospital. Amen. We give God thanks. Amen. For his healing power and his mercies. Amen. His mercies endureth forever. Amen. And we have a testimony today that God answers prayer. Amen. And we are on a series of fasting and consecration. Amen. This week, and we just want to continue to just trust God in the worst of times. The people of God trust him. Amen. One writer said, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Amen. And if we can just go right to our text, we're dealing with the 51 division of the book of the Psalm, number 51. We've been talking to the Lord because we realize and we recognize that what we need most is God more than ever. We need God more than we need anything. And as protocol has already been observed, we just want to get right into the text, this prayer of repentance. This is a, a hymn or a prayer that David had sung or prayed dealing with the agony and the guilt of sin. David does not pass by sin. He doesn't treat it as if it's irrelevant. But it is in his face. And causes severe distraught and pain to his soul. And we just want to look at today. The book of the psalm. As David agonizes and as he prays to the living God asking God for forgiveness this passage of scripture has been around for thousands of years the people of God have used it as an ensample of how one should humble themselves before God because the greatest enemy to every holy child of God is that sinful nature. It is a challenge and it is a, 
a fight that the people of God have had to deal with for thousands of years. And David so eloquently, as the guilt rends his soul, he talks about his condition. David, as we all know, was confronted by the prophet. Prophet ultimately told him that David, God is not pleased with you because of some various activities. Specifically, he had committed adultery and he had murdered. He used murder to get away with adultery. And in the end, both of them found way in his heart. And here we're dealing with a man who was after God's own heart. And we ask, why did God use David as that example? We just want to go through just maybe the first 10 verses. We might not get through them. But David so eloquently pleads to God. Because David knows that everything that he has become is because God placed him there. We know the story that he was anointed to be king when he was just a little boy tending sheep. But God had chose David because of what he saw on the inside. It was God that said to Samuel, you look at the outward appearance. But God says, I look at the heart. In a time where everyone is focusing on the external in a season where everyone's looking at the outside of a man. God is concerned with the inner core of your being. And there is judgment in the house of David. As much as he was favored by God. Because of the responsibility and the accountability that was on David. God had placed judgment in his home. But David was still ever faithful to God. Because David was not so much concerned about how much he had lost. As much as it caused him agony and pain. But David was concerned with his status with God. How much of us are concerned about the state of affairs where our God is concerned? Hallelujah. We spend a lot of time dressing up the outside, the external. We're, we're, we're concerned about how we look, our hair and our nails, our dress code. And we're concerned about our skin, our, our teeth and nothing wrong with that. But the question is, what is the condition of our hearts? topic today is give me a clean heart and a right spirit because this is what God is concerned with. David beckons to, to God and he clings to the character of God. David knows that God is a merciful God. He knows from experience God was merciful to David in time past. And so David understands that God, when you look through the history of the children of Israel, one thing you can say about God is that he is merciful. And as you listen to this text, you yourself can look into your life. You can look into some of the circumstances that you've been through. You can look at some of the sins that you've engaged in. And at the end you have to say, God, you are a merciful God. How many of us can testify? We know the character of God, not only by what's written in scripture, but by personal experience. We can say, God, you have not dealt with me 
according to what I deserve. Come on, somebody shout, God has been good. He is a merciful God. David says, have mercy on me. Because David was not in a comfortable state. David was aware of his status with God. Once we have breached the laws and the righteousness of God. If you're a person of God, you will not be comfortable. As long as you know what God requires, you will not be comfortable where you are in all our singing, in all our shouting, in all our praying. As long as we know that we have not done what God requires, we cannot be at peace. David is miserable within himself. He finds that he cannot have peace. So he beckons to the mercy of God and says, God, have mercy on me. And he pleads to the love and the kindness of God. Because within himself, he finds that guilt stands in the way. All of us can relate. We've been there. We've been at the place where we've desecrated the laws of God. And what stands before David is not only the law of God, but it is God himself. And the third that stands before David is his conscience. Because he was a worshiper. Because he had the knowledge of God. He knew what God required. And as long as you're a true worshiper, and as long as you have the knowledge of God, whenever we breach the commandments of God, we cannot be comfortable. Hallelujah. So God says, according, David says, according to your loving kindnesses, according unto the multitude of your tender mercies hear what david says blot out my transgressions now here's what we love about this passage of scripture david does not come up with excuses he deals with the matter at hand and he's not asking for forgiveness at first He's pleading to the mercies of God. And he's saying, God, take my transgressions away. Now here's a man that knows that within himself he's destitute. Self-improvement cannot help David. Hallelujah. Self, hallelujah, acknowledgement cannot help David. David goes to where he can get help. He goes to the living God and he makes the declaration, God, I need you to blot out. Let's consider that God has a book and God writes every wrong that we have done in that book. David is pleading to the mercies. He's pleading to the loving kindnesses. He's pleading to the tender mercies of God. And says, God, can you look at that breach? He says, God, can you look at that transgression? And can you blot it out? Hallelujah. David recognizes that doing good cannot make himself better. He recognizes that his position cannot make him better. Speaking positive words cannot make him better. Dressing up his body. David is not looking for comfort right now. He's looking for a solution to the problem. David recognizes that within himself there is an issue. And David 
does not justify what he has done like we like to do today. We justify sin. David says, Lord, blot it out. If you can consider what the blood of Jesus did at the cross. Hallelujah. We thank God for the cross. Hallelujah. One songwriter says, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. David said it best. Or sorry, St. Paul said it best. He said, I don't want to hear anything but the cross and him crucified. That's an honest man. Because for you to live holy, you have to live at the cross. For you to live clean, you've got to live at the feet of Jesus. It is at the cross where we receive forgiveness. It is at the cross where we receive our cleansing. Because that's where the blood is. So I'm sorry, but I cannot leave the cross because the cross is where my deliverance is. Hallelujah. The cross is why I am here. So please excuse me while I stay clean at the cross. Hallelujah. Wash me thoroughly. Oh God, David is saying, wash me many of times. One wash won't do. This is what he's telling to God. He's saying, God, I need a multitude of washing. He's saying, because the way that they washed their clothes, amen, in that era was that they took their feet. They took whatever piece of cloth was and they took their feet and they stomped on it. And they kept on stomping on it to get the rubbish out. There are some stains that are stubborn. That only God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, wash me thoroughly. My God, give me a thorough washing, God. Don't wash me one time. Give me a multitude of cleansing. David admits his rotten heart. David confesses his condition. And he says to God, God, I need to be cleansed. Not one time. But thoroughly. Because when you put me through the wash. There might be some leftovers. There might be some residue. Hallelujah. I'm talking to the church. What the church needs. Is true confession. And repentance. Because there are some stubborn sins. As we're dealing with them. Because it is the church. That is going to help the world today. But we've got to deal with original sin. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity that is deep inbreded in me. It is deeply residing inside of me. And we're going to go through it a little bit. Inside every one of us, we love God. And we don't like to talk, but inside every one of us, there is a deep-seated iniquity that needs to be purged by the Holy Ghost. Needs to be sanctified. Hallelujah. By the power of the blood. He says, wash me thoroughly and cleanse me from my sin. David knows the issue of sin. David knows that he inherited sin from his father Adam. David knows that sin is a reproach. 
And so he doesn't wrap over it. He doesn't ignore it. Because when we're dealing with God, if you want revival, if we want to experience God, if we want God to hear us, we have to deal with the truth of sin. And it's not for me to talk about yours and, and for you to talk about mine, but I've got to address my own condition. That's what David did. David looked at his own condition and said, God, wash me. He says, God, cleanse me. Because Christianity is all about God washing. The sinner from his sins. That's what this is all about. And so we're not going to wash over sin and ignore it. But we need God to thoroughly cleanse. Cleanse me from my sin. He owns it and said, Lord, I have done it. He doesn't play the blame game. Like Adam. Adam did not make himself accountable. But David says, wash me God. Wash me God. For I acknowledge my transgressions. This is true humility people of God. When you can acknowledge what you've done without playing the blame game without coming with excuses without transferring what i have done onto someone else david says i acknowledge oh glory to god lord i admit god i confess what i have done my god David says, my sin is ever before me. He doesn't put it in the background, beloved. He doesn't try to hide it under the rug. But David makes the declaration. When I wake up in the morning, my sin is there. When I walk the streets, the guilt is on my conscience. When I dress up, and when I look good to everybody else, it is right there. And for us to be right with God, we have to acknowledge. Cannot try to put it in the back burner. This is the kind of message that doesn't make us jump. It's the message that allows us to search the soul. Why am I not feeling God like the way I should? Why am not, I am not experiencing God the way I should? I cannot blame anyone except myself. Because my sin is ever before me. Everywhere I go, it is there. David was not comfortable. Adultery and murder. Adultery and murder. And brethren, adultery and murder are not the only two sins. Let us be honest. There is pride, anger, maliciousness, bitterness. Come on. Envy. All of these sins. And we walk with them. And they are ever before us. They are in the face of God. And so today we want to take a self-examination. It's not time to look at sister so-and-so and, -so and brother so-and-so. We've got to look within ourselves. Pride is one of the greatest sins. Destroying the people of God. When we think that we're better than others. We glory in what we have. 
we glory in what God has given us. And if God didn't give it to us, we wouldn't have it. So why not give God glory? But we're proud. We're proud about all kinds of stuff. All kinds of things. Proud about pedigree of my family. Proud about my intellect. Proud about how long I've been in church. Proud about my gift. Proud about the money in the bank accounts. Proud about my house. Oh, my children are so bright. Pride. Sin is ever before. Right before us. David says it best. God, give me a clean heart. And give me a right spirit. Because every sin starts from the inner man. And so if God doesn't cleanse us. If God does not wash us. We are in grave danger. As David acknowledges, he says, God against thee. Against you only, God. Have I sinned? Now individuals take this passage of scripture to believe that we can hurt people and not address the person and only address God. But that is not the integrity of the text. Because if I hurt you, my brother, for me to be right, I've got to make it right with you first. This is not an excuse to hurt people and go to God. But what David is doing here, David is going to God and said, God, yes, sir. I've breached Uriah. I've breached against her. Amen, uh, the woman. But God, the worst breach that I did is because I have the knowledge of you. And I still went against your righteousness. When you're a worshiper, you're aware that God is always around. When you're a worshiper, you know that you cannot hide from God. So God is right in the face of David and says, David says, God, against you, against you only, have I sinned. God said that he would heal the land. But before God heals the land, the church must first humble themselves and then pray and then turn from their wicked ways and seek his face so then it is up to the church for the land to receive healing because the unconverted cannot turn and cannot humble themselves so God is talking to my people. It's up to us. We cannot sing in the sin. We cannot preach in the sin. Cannot pray in the sin. God said to humble. And when we're humbling ourselves, we're admitting our wrongs. My wrongs. Not brother so and so. I've got to acknowledge mine. Hallelujah. Against thee only. David is in the face of God now. And says God against thee. Have I sinned and done this evil right in your sight. Hallelujah. I tried to hide, but you were there. If I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the earth, God, thou art there. 
we thought because we turned off the lights, God didn't see. But as David addresses God, he recognizes that when he murdered his brother, he murdered in the face of a holy God. David recognizes that I'm only here because you had mercy on me. And David says, look what I have done. There are times when we observe ourselves. We can surprise ourselves as what we're, of what we're capable of. Inside of us lodges original sin. There is a doctrine of original sin. That if it was not for God, we have the capability to do some unthoughtful things. But God kept us. So we need God to keep us. We need the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Ghost why we did not respond certain ways. It is the power of God why we did not respond it is God that kept us, beloved. David said, I sinned against you, Lord. This is true repentance. This is true humility. David didn't say, Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. Within David, he was wrestling with what he did. He struggled with what he did. David was in agony. He was in pain. He could not be comfortable. This is true repentance. When you go through a dark night of the soul. When what we have done brings us to tears. Until we get that to that point. God will not hear us. We have to know the destruction that sin causes. We have to know how sin offends God. That's why Jesus went through such a brutal death. Hallelujah. He says, unto thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou might be justified. God is a just God. And God is so just. That if it was not for the mercies of God. All of us would have died. My God. So David says yes I have sinned. And God, my sin is ever before me. And he's saying, I'm saying this so that you are justified, God, when you speak. And he says, God, please be clear when you judge me. Wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. You see, because we have to understand that there's a penalty for sin. The whole earth is on lock. Because of the sins of men. It is not because of our righteousness. We have moved away from God. And believe me God is still there. But if God moves from us. We will be in chaos. So we cannot take our repentance lightly. It has caused destruction. It has caused death. David says, Lord, remember one thing. When you're judging, remember that I was born in sin. Hallelujah. I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me 
Now David is not coming with an excuse. But he's reminding God of the cause. Lord, I'm a king. Lord, I'm anointed. Lord, I'm gifted. But when you judge me, Lord, remember that I was formed in sin. I was born into a sinful system. When I was in my mother's womb, I was a sinner. And I was brought into this sinful world. Nobody taught me how to sin God. I was shaped in iniquity. And the very conception of sin was given through sin. The conception, the birth was through sin. So David says, I'm anointed. I'm gifted. I'm a king. But I know where I'm coming from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David says, God, you desire truth on the inward part. Because we can put on a facade to everybody else. But when it comes to me, I have to be honest with myself. Lord, I know within me there is no good thing. Church, the only good thing in us is what God has put in us. Gentlemen went to Jesus and said, good master. Jesus said, my friend, there is none that is good. Only my heavenly father which is in heaven. So I'm sorry, none of us are good. Our righteousness are filthy rags. It is the mercies of God. Why we are not consumed. Hallelujah. Can we be truthful in the inner man? In the hidden parts? Hallelujah. David says now, God, if you deal with my inner man, give me truth. Give me your wisdom. In the inner man. Not the wisdom that shows everybody how intelligent I am and intellectual. But the wisdom that helps me to apply the knowledge of God from the inner man. Because wisdom is the application of knowledge at the right time. So God help me to apply knowledge at the right time from the inner man. Because if it takes place on the inner man, it will manifest on the outside. Come on, there's an inside job. There's an inner core of our being that needs to be sanctified. That's why David says, Lord, give me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Because our spirits can become contaminated. Our hearts can become corrupt. The Bible says it is deceitful. And it is desperately wicked. Who can know the hearts? So God, if you don't cleanse me, Lord. Hallelujah. We're dealing with the solution to healing. We have to deal with us. Individually and collectively. Hallelujah. God. God, you desire truth in my inner man. Jesus said, if you thought about it, you did it already. So then the sin is not only what we do externally. But it is the internal sin. Come on. We're saying hi to one another, but we know that within our hearts, we don't love the brother. 
Oh God, we know that we feel within ourselves that we're better than others. We know within ourselves that we grudge the sister. And we're not hiding it. God knows. And so that's why David says, Lord, I need a cleansing from the inside out. Because if my inside is clean, my whole life will be clean. Hallelujah. So God, give me a clean heart. Hallelujah. Help me to know wisdom. Oh God, help my inner man to know when to speak and when to remain silent. Give me wisdom, God, to know when to walk away. When to not utter a word. Give me the wisdom, God, to not respond. Hallelujah. So that I can be right before God. Verse number 7. David says. Purge me with hyssop. That I may be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. David is dealing with two types of cleansings here. He's dealing with. The cleansing from the external. He's dealing with a physical washing. David wanted a washing. And when you see the word hyssop. It is a Levitical type of cleansing that the priest had to do for the leper and for anyone that was declared unclean like a dead man. So there was a process of cleansing. We know in the New Testament, when Jesus healed the lepers, he said to them, go see the priests. Because when you're clean, you still have to go see the priest. And he has to give you a Levitical washing so that you can be declared clean. So I need, hyssop is like a sponge-like substance that is dipped in the blood of two birds. Of the one bird, rather. And it is dipped in the blood. Hallelujah. And it's dipped in the blood. And it is dipped in scarlet and cedar. And when the high priest takes the hyssop, like the sponge, and dips it inside the bucket, he takes it out and sprinkles the blood on the leper. And after that process, he is declared clean. And so that's why we need the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus to cleanse us. Was a foreshadowing of the sprinkling of the blood. Oh, I thank God for the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Lord, cleanse me. Give me a clean heart. And when you are right spirit, it's an inside job. Only God can do it. Purge me, God. And then I shall be clean. Wash me, God. So that I can be whiter. Hallelujah than snow. David says, now Lord God, help me to know joy again. Because this sin has me miserable. This sin has me depressed. I cannot function like I used to. I'm praising God. But it has a different sound. Because there is no joy. So David says, help me to hear joy and gladness. You cannot have joy as long as sin has not been dealt with. We've got to acknowledge. Hallelujah. Cleanse me, God. Renew me, God. Only God. Hallelujah. David says, hide your face, God. Good God. David tells God to hide his face. David is disgusted within himself for what he has done. Until we get to the point where sin disgusts us, 
We cannot become humble before God. God says, hide your face. And again, he says, blot out my iniquities. He's referring to a stubborn stain that is hard to move. He's referring to, have you ever had a, a, a white piece of clothing? And it becomes stained. You wash it one time. You wash it two times. You wash it three times. So now they have a new substance that you get. And you can just use it and blot out. Some things are stubborn and they don't go easy. Needed to be blotted out. Then David, as we close, David says, create in me. Create. God has to go back to creation. Because the heart that we have is stony. It is rebellious. It rejects the righteousness of God. And so God needs to give us a new heart. And God needs to renew the spirit. Because the spirit has become contaminated. It is a terrible thing when we become used to sin. Renewal is a very aggressive process because sin is stubborn, doesn't want to go. But the church has the solution to what is happening if we can acknowledge our sins. Hallelujah. It is a brutal process. It is offensive because it offends us to realize how separated sin separates us from God. And so when we speak about sin, it offends the flesh. It's a tough process. And that's why it's not preached about a lot. Our forefathers... They used to attack it. And that's why Jesus' death and burial and resurrection was so brutal. That's why the cross was such a brutal experience. Because God had to judge on one man the sins of the world. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace. For us to be at peace. The chastisement of our peace was on him. And every stripe brought healing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Aren't you thankful for the cross today? Hallelujah. I should have suffered and died. Glory to God. But mercy. Hallelujah. Mercy. We are dealing with repentance. and Repentance is never, never a pleasant experience. It is aggressive. It is offensive. It gets us angry. Can we imagine what Jesus Christ went through? For us. Hallelujah. Thank God for the cross. The cross makes the difference. Hallelujah. Create in me a clean heart. And renew a right spirit. Hallelujah. For the spirit of God to reside in the heart of the believer. We have to acknowledge, confess, and turn from sin. Hallelujah. It is a very aggressive process 
But by his mercy, God will bring us through. Hallelujah. We pray that God bless you today. Hallelujah. We pray that we can become thoughtful and reflect on ourselves and give God thanks. And so that we can say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, God. May heaven bless you all today. As we stand, I'm going to just breathe another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Lord, your word is righteous. Your word is holy. Your word commands us to examine ourselves. Father, we bless God for your love. As the world is celebrating love, Lord, we thank you for your love. You expressed your love on the cross. You showed forth your love to humanity by your death. So, Lord, as we look on ourselves, we confess, we repent. Lord, we want to be filled with your spirit. And so, Lord, we ask you to cleanse us today. Cleanse all of us that are online. Cleanse all of us that are listening. We need to be washed. Purify us today, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Heaven bless you all today. May you reflect on this message so that we can get healing. The land needs to be healed. And so the healing comes. My people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Pray. Turn from their wicked ways and seek my face. That is the formula. God bless you all. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before the throne of his glory. With exceeding great joy to the only wise God our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. Praise the Lord.